today on All Outbreak, we're going to be looking at LEGO set 10283, the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery. We're going to build the set and then give it a review and a score. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Christian from All Out Brick. If you're a first time viewer, welcome to our channel. And if you've seen us before, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery set that was released by LEGO in April of 2021. This set was released as an addition to the space theme, but more specifically as a complementary piece to the other NASA sets that LEGO has released lately. The shuttle Discovery was a part of the historic NASA STS-31 mission launched in 1990 to place the Hubble Space Telescope into Earth's orbit. This telescope has gifted us with some of the most stunning and unbelievable photos of what lies beyond our planet's atmosphere. If you head over to NASA's website, there's a collection of photos from the Hubble telescope that will blow your mind, seriously. I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can go check some of those photos out. Taking a look at the packaging, on the front of the box we have a really good image of the Space Shuttle and the Hubble telescope separate from each other. Of course, we'll get into later detail about how they kind of connect to each other and how you can separate them. But we have the all black background, this is familiar for the other 18 plus sets. The bottom ribbon, which is dark bluish gray bricks, has the 18 plus indication, the set number 10283, and the piece count 2,354 pieces. There's the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery logo in the top left corner, and the bottom right corner there's a Space Shuttle Program logo. I have not seen Seen this before i think that's a really nice touch and the bottom left we have the lego logo of course this is a lego set the left side of the box has some other images there's the space shuttle program logo again then the hubble telescope close-up and the space shuttle as if they're flying through space something about this black background i want to point out is that there are stars this is a good touch of course space so it makes a ton of sense here on the back of the box we get a much better image of how the kind of construction works for this set the hubble telescope sits inside of these two flaps of the shuttle itself and there's a crane arm that lifts it up I'm pretty sure this is very accurate to what the actual shuttle is. There's an interview on lego.com with an original engineer that worked in this specific mission, so you can check that out as well. On the bottom, we have an image from the actual launch that day of the shuttle Discovery, some other images of the set, and then an image of the Hubble telescope orbiting around Earth. On the top of the box, we have the NASA Discovery logo again, but this time it's in a different language. We have another image of the shuttle Discovery and an actual size brick. I was trying to look at where this is. I believe this is the cockpit piece. Hope it's printed. It looks to be printed. So I guess we're going to find out when we pop this open. Let's go ahead and pop this box open. There are three seals on each side of the box. All right. Now let's go ahead and see what we got inside. Oh. This is interesting. I did not expect this for this set. A big white box. That's definitely got a ton of bags in it. And then there's some more bags inside of the box. Let's go ahead and just dump those out. Whew. I see a bag. Let's lodge in that. There we go. Okay. So, tons of bags in here. I see a bag 17. It's a nice plastic bag with some larger parts in there. Bag 15, oh. and let's find out. Here's the instructions. Oh man, yep. Some very big bags, big instructions. Big instructions, and then we got some gold pieces. I guess they're like little flaps that go to the Hubble Space Telescope. That is gonna be exciting. Lots of silver reflective stuff on there. It looks like a sticker sheet. Wow. So in total, we received 17 numbered bags along with the instructions, a sticker sheet, and then two other sheets that look like they're used for the Hubble telescope and reflective pieces. Well, we've taken a look at everything that comes inside the box, so let's go ahead and get started right on with the build. I just finished up the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery build. In total, it was a four and a half hour build, which is kind of where I expected things to be. This is like a 2,400 piece set, and I normally find myself building around 600 pieces per hour. So this fit into that like four to five hour range that I was expecting. Therefore, the build didn't really have anything crazy or difficult, and it wasn't super easy or anything. It was exactly what I expected for an 18 plus set. I'm sure you can tell that this is kind of like two sets in one almost with like the Hubble Space Telescope and then the Space Shuttle. So this review is kind of gonna go from like 
the space shuttle and then we'll move on to the Hubble telescope. Starting off with the space shuttle, the first thing is that it is so good looking. I mean, the studless look that they chose to use here, or nearly studless, there's a couple studs sticking up, completely works for this model. I think if you look at certain Lego models, the studless look just doesn't work and it makes it not even feel like, you know, this one doesn't feel like Lego, but it's one of the ones where being studless in my mind is something that was not essential, but a really good design choice because it's representing such like an engineered model and this very specifically crafted like NASA space shuttle. I feel like the super clean look helps to drive the point of like NASA. Like when I see this and I see Lego, it's like, yeah, that looks like something that belongs with Lego NASA. It shouldn't have any studs. If that makes sense. Another good thing that I saw with the space shuttle design is that the angles work so good. You see this mainly like the rear wings and then it builds all the way like you know, the angles work their way up towards like the front nose of the space shuttle. You, it's just so clean. They really filled in as much of the gaps as they could everywhere. There's no big ones like yeah, there's some small ones, but they really did a good job blending everything seamlessly together. And I really can't look at this model and be like, oh, this is probably how this attaches here. I just think that they did such a good job it came out excellent another excellent thing that they did was include so many printed parts and I mean so many I was stunned when I saw the picture of this shuttle on the box I, at first I was like um how are they gonna do all this like this better not be all stickers because that would really stink and sure enough Lego knows what they're doing as I'm sure we've seen plenty of times with these 18 plus sets is that they know what they're doing. There's not a lot of sticker parts at all. In fact, the only big like sticker parts, there's like four small stickers on the outside that say like Discovery and NASA. And then there's a ton of silver ones on like the inside. Once you open the shuttle up, there's a bunch of silver ones that are kind of tedious to put on and your fingerprints get on them and kind of take away some of that silver shine. But aside from that, everything's printed there's a ton of custom printed tiles here and then some more like generic ones for controls and like remotes and stuff like that but there's brand new nasa print tiles and like usa and tons of bricks and there's it's so many printed bricks i was really surprised that they included that many and i'm really thankful because again this is an 18 plus like collector's set in $200, I fully expect that there should be some of those things included. And it's nice that they didn't decide to just compromise their production costs and make it a little cheaper on their end and make us put on more stickers. It's nice that they said, you know what, we're not going to cut any corners. We're going to give you printed parts where you deserve them. So thank you, Lego, for doing that. The build itself, I actually had a ton of fun with. There wasn't like anything where I was like, this is super tedious and it's a mirrored model and you know, it's a spaceship. And I never really got the feeling of like, uh, like time to build the other side like most of the time you're building it at the same time and when you're not they're smaller sections so it's just overall you're just mowing through different design techniques it's not like they repeated the same thing over and over from the back end to the front end of the shuttle ton of different stuff going on from like the very beginning of the build all the way through the end so i never got bored with the build i was having a blast through this entire process of creating the shuttle and the hubble telescope so all across the board here the build was fantastic something that surprised me with the build is we get like these black stands and they're super clean black stands i think if it weren't for like the four studs sticking up i probably wouldn't even think that it's a lego stand it would just look like a regular like display stand or like a custom one that some people get online for their models but this is actually the first thing you build for both the space shuttle discovery and the hubble telescope you build the black stand first which correct me if i'm wrong but we normally build these at the end of when we create models so that was like a little bit of a twist that i wasn't expecting and then it just kind of sat off to the side for a while i have no idea why they chose to do that but i mean they did <laughs> something that i learned to appreciate and i'm sure everyone else will with this model is that you really get a sense of scale here you don't like while i was building it i wasn't thinking like hey this is kind of like a pretty big you know shuttle it's a space shuttle but when you put the front seats in the cockpit it suddenly hits you of like this moment of like holy like this thing is huge like i think the seats are like half of minifigure scale so this is a one to two scale probably of minifigure scale space shuttle discovery so when you think about it in those terms it's like this thing is probably enormous a side effect of all of these different you know studless designs and the angles working really well together creates this result that not only doesn't look like lego which in my mind is a good thing for this type of model but it also makes it look like it's like airtight it looks like how a NASA space shuttle should look. I, it looks like I could throw this thing in water and it wouldn't. Obviously, it would because there's, there's cracks in Lego. But it really does a great job of making this thing look like it's a solid built beast. Like this thing looks like something that could fly up into space. And I think they nailed it with this. And they really had to. You know, you can't produce a NASA model that's got like some big gaps in it because it's like, you know, how are you going to make a space shuttle <laughs> where, you know, air can completely escape the shuttle if it was in space. So I feel like that's a side effect of it. A 
good side effect of it. Talking about the play features, the biggest one with the Space Shuttle Discovery is that it can open up to expose the area that the Hubble Space Telescope launches out of. This area kind of looks like a hallway, almost like a Star Wars hallway is what it really reminds me of. There's a few different things here. There's a big crane arm that you can attach to the Hubble Telescope. We'll get into that a little bit later. There's also a small little uh, like little detail things, nothing too fancy in here. Another feature on the Space Shuttle that I think the instructions don't even like touch on there's a lot of notes in the instructions and i don't think one of them touches on this is that at the back rear end of the shuttle you can twist the top engine that's on the back of the shuttle and this causes the back of the wings to fold up and down and they don't work independently of one another like you can only make one go up while the other goes down or vice versa you can't make them both go up at the same time or down at the same time i think this is just to show like how the space shuttle would direct itself uh, obviously one of them would flap up if it wanted to veer left or right and I think that's what this is representing but again with no note I'm not 100% certain I'm not that familiar with rocket design jumping all the way to the front end of the space shuttle this opens up to two different levels there's like the main level where I guess like the pilot controls would be and there's also a level below this where I think they describe it as like where the pilots would put on their suits and where the astronauts would kind of get ready and there's like a couple different stuff again the instruction manual does a great job of touching on all of the specifics with it it was a lot to ingest it was like every couple pages so i'm not gonna remember all of it the last main feature that's included with the space shuttle itself and then we'll go on to the hubble telescope is that you don't have to display it on the black stand me personally i really like the black stand like display look but if you don't want it like that or you're a bigger fan of this style there's a small black panel on the back end of the shuttle and if you push it in it spring launches out the these three different wheels to make the shuttle land down and you can place it down on these wheels it'll stand completely sturdy just fine as if it just returned from its trip to space so I guess it depends on how you want it set up me personally I'm like it how it's like angled up and it's on this black display but if you wanted to or like maybe you wanted to change up your display every now and then or something like that you do have the option of swinging those wheels down and it can like roll along on the wheels I feel like yeah they definitely had to <laughs> include this but me personally, it's not something that I'm going to like be looking at a lot in the future, but it is a really cool mechanism how they get like the springs to kind of flap out and then you pull the black platform back and you can fold the wheels back up. That's just an option for you if you want. But again, I like the black display stand. I think it looks super sleek, super awesome on this angle. And I think I'm going to just going to keep it that way. Now, moving on to the Hubble Space Telescope. This is a model that I found to be quite enjoyable, more so than I initially thought. It's also much bigger than, not much bigger, but it's definitely bigger than what I originally thought it was going to be. And this was a pleasant surprise. Another pleasant surprise is the fact that there is a ton of silver pieces included with this thing. I thought it was going to be light gray. I didn't like look super closely at it or anything, or I thought maybe there'd be some silver accents, but no, like this entire thing is pretty much silver, which is amazing. I don't know how often Lego decides to make this part silver. Like imagine if they made that Aston Martin, imagine if they made it silver. This is kind of like the level of surprise that I got. I, I completely was stunned by this and I'm so thrilled that they did decide to do it. However, they didn't decide to use gold pieces instead of yellow pieces, which kind of baffled me. You know, they, they include so much silver, but not gold pieces that still stick with the yellow pieces. That's kind of the only knock I have on the Hubble telescope. And it's just overall, it's pretty good. Um, it's a nice complimentary piece, obviously, to the space shuttle. And it's obviously what gets launched out of the space shuttle. That's what STS-31, the mission, was meant to do, is to launch the Hubble Space Telescope. So they absolutely had to include this with the space shuttle. They couldn't just do the shuttle without doing the telescope and make it such a big and expensive set. The round shape is also excellently done here. It's a pretty simple one. It's kind of like a style, a formula that LEGO sticks to with using the curved slope pieces. And it's nothing that they haven't done before. We've seen it, they do it plenty of times. But again, it just works really well here. And at this scale, they got not lucky but the design they chose it looks great it looks super round cylindrical it's not like unless i took a super hard look at it, i'd be like oh okay those are four sides but from like far away like i would never look at it and be like yep, that's a square with some slope curves on it no it does look really nice the main thing that you can do with the hubble space telescope is you can open up the flap which is i guess where the telescope's like aperture lens like where it starts to gather that light information is located this can open up or can close back in you can also tilt the solar panels at different angles it obviously these in real life change themselves and reorient themselves to be faced at the sun to increase like their optimal power output is so that they're always like pointed at the sun duh but in this case you're kind of limited to how you can move the panels around but 
I like the option that they can. Just like with the space shuttle itself, the Hubble telescope includes an angled black stand that's super sleek. There's only like two studs that stick out of this thing. It looks fantastic, super great. It hardly even looks Lego again. And for this set, I am a huge fan of that. Sometimes I do like the studs exposed, not in this case with this set. Of course, as you see it right here on my desk, they're displayed separately from one another. I have like the Hubble telescope on its own, on its own stand, and then the space shuttle discovery on its own stand. But you can display it alternatively without the stand to the Hubble telescope like I said before you just have to make a quick couple changes with some small parts and there's a separate black stand that you put into the space shuttle once you open up those flaps and then all of a sudden you can display the Hubble telescope as if it's coming out of the space shuttle discovery um, unfortunately the solar panels can't be included here I'm not sure how the solar panels were attached to the Hubble telescope. I don't know if it was sitting in like this cargo bay without the panels attached and then they attached them in space or if this is kind of just like a limitation that this model has that the panels have to be taken off. Not entirely sure on that. I'm sure Lego has that information on their website. There's a big interview that they did with one of the lead engineers and astronauts that was on the NASA STS-31 mission. It was actually the first woman to do a walk in space and she details so much stuff about this model and kind of like the actual history of it with NASA. So I urge you to check that out if you want to see some more specific things. Once the Hubble Space Telescope is on top of that black stand, you can move the crane arms so that it looks like it's picking up the Hubble telescope. I'm not <laughs> sure. I think it was, I don't think the black stand was necessary in real life. So this is something to me where it's like, you know, I get it. Obviously, that arm is not going to be able to hold up this entire thing, but maybe a transparent stand instead of a black stand <laughs> would have been pretty nice Lego. Uh, obviously, when we see mocks, there's transparent stands used all the time. I don't know why Lego didn't do that here. Unless, of course, that's 100% accurate that there was like a black like elevator lift that pushed the Hubble telescope up along with the crane. Just like all Lego sets, though, this is not a perfect one, and there are some drawbacks that I want to put some light onto. Number one, there are a ton of printed tiles, but one of them you don't even get to see when you have it displayed like this, and it's on the Hubble Space Telescope. There is a NASA printed tile that is on the underside of it while it's displayed on this black stand. I have no idea why they chose to display it this way and not the other way around, mainly because wouldn't you want that tile to be exposed? Like it's got this beautiful NASA print on it and obviously it costs them extra money to do it. So why would you have that on the bottom and not shown? Also on the Hubble Space Telescope, the solar panels are kind of like these large flaps, almost like these boat sail type of pieces, these thin sheets, and they have a hard time staying still. They kind of warp and no matter what you do, you just have to go back and fix it every once in a while so that they're straight. I don't think that there's a way they could have done this better at this scale. I think with the International Space Station, they used a different method to make the solar panels, but I don't think they had that option because of the size of the solar panels here, so they had to come up with something new. I think it's a good solution. It's also a very lightweight solution, but it kind of is a little flimsy. A little flimsy for my liking for a $200 set. And like I said before, the yellow pieces feel like don't even feel like I know that they should be gold because NASA and like SpaceX, they use very precious materials when they build these rockets. So those yellow pieces were definitely gold. I guess Lego didn't feel like remolding those pieces in the gold color. I have absolutely no idea why they chose yellow. Maybe they did do a test with gold and it just kind of looked off. But yeah, the, the yellow kind of takes away from it a little bit. As for the main attraction, the shuttle, the first thing that I wish was different is that we got the inclusion of either minifigures or micro figures. I know obviously they can't go make like minifigures of the astronauts from the STS-31 mission. Like no offense, but not a whole lot of people are going to know who they are unless they like made like a Neil Armstrong one. And Neil Armstrong was not in this shuttle mission, so that would make no sense. But maybe like a generic Lego astronaut would have been awesome to include on like the display stand or something like that. But a micro figure also would have given us the sense of scale. Like you could put them in the cockpit and it would be like, okay, that gives us an even better sense of the scale since we don't have any minifigures here. So I wish that they included at least like one of those. Kind of surprised that they didn't because it feels like minifigures and micro figures are being more and more included as we see more sets produced. But aside from those things, as I'm sure you can tell, I am head over heels with the Space Shell Discovery model. I really wasn't expecting this to come out. It wasn't something I was planning to do. And then a couple weeks ago, I saw the images that were officially released for it and it blew me away. And I said, you know what? I need to get that day one and I'm so glad that I did. In terms of availability, I'm 
we have to see kind of how it goes. Sometimes with these newer sets, they sell out and it takes a while for them to come back in stock. I didn't have any problem picking it up yesterday. Like I went like middle of the day and the Lego store still had plenty of them left. So maybe this will be one of those. I know it's not like a themed set, like a Star Wars one. So hopefully it doesn't sell out completely so you can get it. It retails for 200 US dollars. And I think that is absolutely worth it for that price point. We've seen other $200 sets completely at a lower level than something like this. So if you have something and you're looking for like a budget range of $200, I would tell you that this is absolutely one you should look to get. Also, if you're like a NASA fan or a space fan, I can't imagine you not having this set. This feels like something where you could really get someone into Lego by saying like, hey, like I'm looking for like a cool NASA model, or like something on my desk. 100% this is the way that I would point you to go. So in terms of like a score for this set, I'm going to go with huge 9-1. For the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery, there's only a small few things that I don't like with it, and it's such a sleek, just beautiful looking model. I, I honestly like thought I was gonna build this and then maybe like put it away somewhere, but it's genuinely like one of my favorite sets that I've built now that I have it completely done. Really just an unbelievable job done by Lego here to produce this set. So 9-1, that's your review. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be the first to see all of our future content. Also be sure to check us out on our website and on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Until next time, stay bricking. Oh,